occasionally, you may come across something called a complex number. A complex number has to be something that's defined because it doesn't happen in a nice, neat way. If we have the square root of a negative number, it's hard to divine, define unless we use an imaginary value. We're going to call this imaginary number i. And therefore, if we have i squared, it would be the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1. And this would give us negative 1. So i squared is negative 1. So now we can calculate these weird things that happen when we get negative values under a radical. If we know that the square root of 25 is 5, and we know the square root of a negative 1 is i, we can say that the square root of negative 25 is the same as the square root of negative 1 times 5 squared, and that could continue, and we would get 5i when simplified. So, expressions with radicals. Remember to always simplify the radical first. Let's work on some, some radicals that have negatives inside of them. The first one is the square root of negative 45. Let's go ahead and prime factor 45 really quickly before we go any further. If I divide 45 by 5, I get 9, and if I divide 9 by 3, I get 3. Divide 3 by 3, I get 1. So if I prime factor negative 45, I get negative 1 times 3 squared times 5. Once I've done that, I know that the negative 1 part will be the i when I pull it out of the radical. The 5 is prime, and so it will have to stay in. And the square root of 3 squared is 3. So I'm going to have 3i square root of 5. In example 2, I have the square root of negative 6 multiplied to the square root of negative 10. This is the same as the square root of negative 1 times 6 multiplied to the square root of negative 1 times 10. We could continue to work through these, remembering that negative 1 is like an i on the outside of the radical sign. And we could factor the 6 further. So we would have the square root of negative 1 times 2 times 3 multiplied to the square root of negative 1 times 2 times 5. From here, we know that we could pull out an i in both. This would give us i squared on the outside. On the inside, after we've taken out the i's or the negative 1's, so to speak, we would then have 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. When we factor we can easily see what's happening here inside the radical. Dropping down that i squared, we can see that 2 times 2 is the same as 2 squared times 3 times 5. The 2 squared divided by the index 
will give us a 2 that we can pull out front. And we'll have 2i squared, and what will be left in the radical will be 15, or 3 times 5. When we get to this point, we have to remember that i squared is the same as a negative 1. And from there, we're left with negative 2 root 15.